Mark Morton from Lamb of God. Chad, this is Ben May. Gary Holt. Mark. Kiko Lodato. Shovel here. Al Braun. Chris Kale. We steal my travel. Justin Morrow. Trevor Sternet. Sobre la dosis. 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 It's a great metal podcast. Jonathan Montenegro. Jonathan Montenegro. Jonathan Montenegro. Jonathan Montenegro. Jonathan Montenegro. Let's go! You better be listening because I know where you live. All right, what's going on, Jonathan? Three questions with me, Jose Metal Ambassador Mangan. All right, here we go. First question you asked me. Do you remember which was the first famous metal band you interviewed and how was the experience? Well, Jonathan, I started in college radio when I was 18 at the University of Arizona in Tucson. And I remember interviewing a band called War Dog. They were a, a smaller band. I think they were on Metal Blade Records, but you know, they were a smaller band and no longer active anymore. But I remember the first major interview that I had in college radio, I had my micro cassette recorder from Radio Shack and I went to go see Testament in Tucson. I forgot the venue. And afterwards, I was able to meet up with Chuck Billy at their hotel, which was a Best Western, uh, maybe a mile or two away from the venue. And I remember waiting for a while and not knowing how to contact Chuck Billy to see where he, his room was. But I remember a pizza delivery guy going upstairs to deliver pizza and when he opened the door I saw a bunch of long haired dudes and I was like oh that's where they're staying so I went over there after the pizza guy and I, I pulled out my recorder and I told him who I was and Chuck Billy answered the door and he was so cool to me invited me in and uh, he gave me a Foster's beer I wasn't 21 uh, so bad Chuck and he also asked me if I wanted to smoke weed with him uh, specifically hash and I was like, oh my God, I had, at that point, I never really smoked official hash, you know, maybe resin and old roaches and stuff like that, but not hash. And so I was like, whoa, Chuck Billy from Testament wants to smoke with me. And we smoked out of his metal pipe. I remember it getting hot in my hand because you're kind of lighting up the hash and it was just such a trip. And then I interviewed Chuck and he was just golden to me treated me like I was his friend forever and he just respected me and, and even though I was at a tiny little college radio station he didn't give a shit Chuck Billy treated me the same then as he does now all these years later uh, as a dear close friend of him and he's still to this day one of my favorite metal people in the world so I love Chuck Billy so that was my first interview experience it went really well because we were just talking and I didn't have questions written out. It was just more of like, a, you know, I just smoked weed and drank a beer with Chuck Billy. Like, that's all I needed. And so that was my first interview, Jonathan. So there you go, college radio. Question number two. I hope these aren't, aren't long answers. Uh, to date, what has been the highlight in your career as a metal ambassador? Well, that's an easy one to answer, Jonathan. I would have to say after you know, 21 years at Sirius XM and plus the four, five years, six years of radio before Sirius XM. So that's like 27 years of radio, which is when you, when you say it like that, it kind of, you know, it's like, oh, fuck, it's kind of old, you know, I've been around for a long time. But my favorite part, the highlight of my career as a metal ambassador is when my idols become my friends. Um, case in point, Chuck Billy from Testament, meeting him back when I was like 19 years old and, uh, and we're still close to this day. Um, idols like Vinnie Paul from Pantera and Hell Yeah, we became very close after his brother Dimebag, my idol, was uh, taken from us in 2004. Vinnie and I became very close. And um, you know, years later, after he passed away in 2018, I inherited his limousine that him and his brother Dimebag bought in 2001. So I know you know that story, Jonathan. That's, cr that's fucking mind blowing right there. And so that's just an example of idols becoming friends. The guys in Metallica, you know, getting a hug from James Hetfield the other day. It made my knees buckle. My knees were shaking, Jonathan. I, I, I couldn't, I was like, I just fucking hugged James Hetfield. And I've hugged him a bunch before. But it's just that certain feeling. Dave Mustaine from Megadeth, uh, the guys in Anthrax, Joey Belladonna and Frank Bello, Scott Ian, uh, these are friends of mine and I can't 
believe that kind of shit. Jonathan Davis from Corn. I love the fuck out of Corn. Eating Corn and, and listening to Corn. And Jonathan is a personal friend now. And we had his album release party for his solo record here, uh, right behind my phone on the stage over here in Seal Beach at Affliction's headquarters. So. Crazy shit like that, man. I think that's the highlight. Um, number one that I think of is that. Uh, a close second and right behind it is being able to help build the metal community to um, where it's at in its present position today. I put all of my heart, soul into this music and, um, and into helping the scene and to see it get bigger and stronger, at least I feel like it is, um, that's such a a cool benefit just from being a, a, a fan with a microphone in, in front of me and, and being able to, to project my passion onto others, uh, infect them with a love for heavy music. I think that's also a really cool career highlight right there, man. Pay, you know, giving back to the community, which gave so much to me. Okay, uh, final question, Jonathan here. Let's see, your top three metal albums of all time. All right, Jonathan, this one, it's been a topic that's been discussed a lot in my head uh, with my voices and uh, all of them. And I would say my number one metal album of all time, oh man, my number one metal album of all time has to be Pantera's Vulgar Display of Power. I can't, I can't choose not a Pantera album for this question. I mean, Vulgar Display of Power it doesn't, I don't need to say nothing. It has everything that I have loved so much about heavy music and it's got Vinny and Dime and Phil and Rex and you know, that wins right there. So I would say Vulgar Display of Power is number one. I would say number two, it's, it's a close, close tie between Master of Puppets and, and Justice For All from Metallica. Both those albums changed my life and Justice changed my life more because that's when I really got into Metallica, when I watched the one video premiere on the Headbangers Ball, or kind of, actually, I think it was premiered in regular MTV time. But when I saw the one video, that was it. Uh, I became a massive Metallica worshiper, and I started with Injustice, and I marinated in that album for years. Uh, maybe not that long. And then I went backwards, and then I got Puppets, and then I got Ride the Lightning, and then I got Kill Em All. Uh, so that's how my progression with Metallica went. And then of course the Black Album came out a little uh, while after this point in my life. And, and then th that was it, they, they blew up everywhere. But um, I would say, okay, let me go back. I would say Master of, oh, fuck, albums of all time. Uh, my top three, I would say, ah, I would probably put up Injustice then at number two. And just to mix it up, I'm going to put, I got it. It's close between Korn's debut and Sepultura's Arise. Uh, those two albums for me are are my favorite, and they're, they're kind of it's kind of crazy how you know uh, a few albums later, Max Cavaleta and Jonathan Davis jammed together on the Roots album on the song Look Away. So. Um, the remix. So I thought that was a really cool thing, having Jonathan and Max get together. Uh, and Max is another example of an idol becoming a friend. Uh, he's a close friend and I love that. But I would say Sepultura's Arise would be right up there. Man, there's so many I can pick from Jonathan. Uh, Seasons in the Abyss, Slayer. I would also put up Rust in Peace, Megadeth uh, uh, up near in, in that category, in, in that top of the hemisphere of my life. and. I would also say the first Buya album, just because being a Latino like you, um, you know, having a, a type of an album or a band that represents that part of our lives. Uh, I love the Buya. So I kind of gave you maybe my top 10, but uh, you asked me for my top three. So let's say Pantera, Vulgar Display of Power, Metallica's Injustice for All, and Sepultura's Arise. There you go. I'm happy with that. But I could throw up Corn debut. Uh, in the number three slot, but I'll put that at four uh, in, in this context here. So I hope that freaking answers your questions, brother. Thanks for asking me three questions. And uh, Jonathan, happy new year, brother. Thanks for doing this shit. Thanks for supporting the metal scene like you do. And we'll talk soon. Orale.